Hmm. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Romantic love. It's a lot like a rose. It's so beautiful and smells so sweet, but it's got those sharp thorns that if you've ever been, you know, stuck by it, you know how much it hurts. But you find the right person and it, it just, it's a blooms and blooms and blooms and it's something really just nothing else like it so today i am just going to share with you um <laughs> so a story of how my guides helped me to find the right one for me and i'm, I'm just going to share a piece of artwork also that was involved in that and at the end i'll do a love reading for this valentine's day 2021 or whenever you happen to land on this video if you're drawn to this, this reading is going to be for you. Okay, so this story takes us back almost a year and a half ago to November 2019. And I had about two years before left a very challenging long-term marriage. And, and at that point, I was really feeling kind of ready <laughs> to maybe jump into this relationship thing again. Um, I actually had... A, a, a long-term relationship or a, a kind of a long distance relationship with an old flame that, that this person really is dear to my heart but it just wasn't feeling aligned to me and then there was another <laughs> another long story um a person that was not a romantic relationship but was had that kind of twin flame feeling on my end anyway and which i knew from the get-go wasn't right but it just was one of those super compelling emotional things that it, you know, it was like, I, you know, some of those things where it's like, no matter how hard you try, it's still there. So you're kind of working through some of those things and maybe you can relate <laughs> to, to some of these experiences. Um, but it was like, I knew that neither one of those was the right, but it, it was just sort of, you know, where do we go from here? And so one time, as you, if you've been following me for a while, you, you may know that I work in my journal and that I access um, kind of the Akash or through my higher guidance through the journal a lot. It's one, one beautiful way. And if you haven't tried it yet, I'd encourage you to try journaling because it, it's an awesome way to really, really connect in a deep way to your, to your higher self. Anyway, so I was doing some journaling and I wasn't even asking so much about, I wasn't even asking directly about romance. It wasn't even on my mind, but I was just sort of like asking for kind of clarity and guidance on kind of the path ahead or the next couple months. And all of a sudden, she, my, my higher guidance starts going in on you need more romance in your life <laughs> and not the swashbuckling kind. You need the flowers and chocolate kind, but maybe light on the chocolate, right? <laughs> and then she can, she per, uh, can, continued and gave me this whole list of instructions and what to do next so I wrote them all down and it was um, things like first thing she told me to do was write down exactly what you want in a partner all the important things just write them down and then she said paint the angel of romance and then hang that painting up in your bathroom get yourself some roses buy roses for yourself get yourself some bubble bath take a bubble bath she gave me this whole laundry list of things to do so when i came out of that and reread it i was like wow <laughs> and oh at the end she goes this is your christmas wish i was like and i was sort of like looking at this like where did this come from <laughs> but then i decided what the heck okay so i did i did every single thing on that list and starting with the painting of the angel of romance and part of me in the back of my mind is like what is this so i got this big sheet of watercolor paper i'm gonna put this painting up here so you can see it got this big sheet of watercolor paper and just started painting and you know just letting the intuition take it and this angel appears and when I first saw him I was like really I felt dismayed I was like I am so done with you know my heart being a battleground and here's this warrior this really powerful <laughs> warrior angel it's like I know I don't want this anymore <laughs> but and then I went and did the rest of it, right? I took the bubble bath and all that. And, oh, they said put the rose petals in the bath. So I had this bubble bath with rose petals and a candlelight. It was so romantic. It was just me, right? And, um, but then I, I, as I took that bath, I understood that, and they, they told me, 
and, and I did some more journaling around this, and they said, or she said, my higher guidance, um, said that there will be other angels of romance. This is the first one that you're being sent. And the reason it's a warrior is because he's going to protect and guard the boundaries of your heart. And then it was like, oh, well, that makes so much sense. Um, because like many of us, one of the things that you know, I was running into is, was, you know, feeling this oneness with another person without really having those boundaries in, in, in which opened me up to not being treated well, to not treating myself well, and, you know, all those things that lead down that path to a, a very painful love, love relationship. Okay. So, so, um, so what happened next? What happened next was really amazing. <laughs> um, this friend of mine who I, I had gotten to know over the past year and had actually hired him to work on my house and, and stuff like that. Um, but to me, I, I wasn't really feeling this romantic feeling towards him, but he started showing up. And even just a, a couple of years before, my my guidance had told me the right one's going to show up on your doorstep, right? And and he started sort of showing up in my life, and then shortly before Christmas, I I really started getting this feeling. This was maybe two weeks before Christmas. Um, I started getting this feeling. I really really need to just end this long distance relationship. It just it's it's not right and. And I kind of put it off. Maybe this was like three weeks before I put it off to about three. And, and finally, it was like really urgent. You got to just cut it off. And so I did. And then like, I think it was maybe the very next day that um, my friend Rich had basically asked me out for a Christmas morning. <laughs> and we ended up going on this hike on Christmas morning. And, and we've been together ever since. And really happy ending to that is like last, last solstice. Um, just a few, a couple months ago, we ended up getting married. So, <laughs> um, so that's my love story that I wanted to share with you. And I'm sharing it with you in case if you are in that position where you're just like have been hurt by love, but are really feeling like you want that in your life, um, that, that, you know, even if you've been hurt again and again and again, you can still like it's that that true love does exist. It really does. It, it's amazing when you find it and that you also have to be very, very, first of all, clear about what it is that you want, right? What's important to you in that other person and be very clear on that and then also be willing to say no and willing to just, you know, um, bring in that warrior angel and, and recognize that you are, you, you know, you're, you're worth treating well. You're, you deserve respect. You deserve to be treated well, right? And whatever that means to you. But it's important that, you know, you, first of all, understand within yourself and, and begin to really love yourself in a deep, deep, deep way and to protect your own boundaries and and make sure that whoever does, you know, make it through, they're going to make, it's going to be that one who not just shows you love, right? Because you, you know how many relationships start with love bombing, but truly shows you respect and, you know, uh, and who is just, um, you know, is going to show up for you. <laughs> and it also needs to be vice versa, right? So really being clear on, you know, how you can support that person as well. Okay, so I hope you've <laughs> enjoyed that little story. And um, I'm just, stay tuned now, we'll just do a little love reading. And by the way, I don't think I introduced myself in this video yet. So if you don't know me, my name is Ona Christie. And I am a visionary artist and um, energy worker. I work a lot with the, the, the spirit animals and kind of the nature spirits. And today I'm actually going to be using a plant deck. This is the illustrated herbiary, beautiful deck that was given to me recently 
by Maya Toll. So, starting with the energy of you, Quaking Aspen. Okay, we are one. This is beautiful. This is a, uh, this will be, is going to be represent kind of what you're working with right now, kind of the, the energy, the current challenge or lesson that you're learning, right? Um, it's called We Are One. So this is a perfect <laughs> card to come up in terms of a love reading. This is, if you're if you're resonating with this, now remember this is a general reading for the collective. So if you don't resonate with this, it just means that you're not necessarily at this point right now. Um, but this can be, this is great for either if you're seeking love or if you're already in a relationship and, you know, looking at deepening that relationship. So Aspen is a beautiful, beautiful tree that um, if you're looking at an Aspen grove, a lot of times they're going to be actually the same tree. It's just coming up as, as different. Um, there'll be this whole interconnected root system. And so the different Aspens are going to be pretty much, <laughs> pretty much one, basically. Uh, so a lot about Aspen is about really connecting to something greater than yourself and because what happens sometimes in, in relationships is that we want to connect with that other person right and we're um, what we really need to do first is root down really connect with the oneness right and and connecting with that great mother with the oneness of mother earth and feeling your connection with all of humanity right um, and and feeling your place there and also you know, reaching up and connecting with that higher light, okay? And once you've done that, once you've really rooted and really grounded yourself and also are holding yourself consistently to the light, right? When you really have that deep connection, um, you know, the central sun, the, the, the Holy Father, with the, the core of the crystal Mother Earth, right? The Holy Mother, that's when you can have this personal relationship because be, it, until you connect with that Divine Mother, Divine Father, you're always going to be looking for that connection. And if, if you're trying to get that out of a, another individual, it's never going to work, right? So Aspen tells us that, okay, once we have that, that deeper connection with, you know, with the planet, with spirit, with, you know, knowing our place in the whole, then we can have that beautiful, beautiful love bond between two individuals. Um, looking at this one, this will be, um, you know, energies that you've either mastered or are coming out of. A white willow says the ways of water. Um, to me, water often is like this emotional field, right? And white willow coming up as a challenger with this water coming up as a challenger, that that's, I mean, that, to me, that's always this over overly emotional or being carried away by your emotions, right? It's seeing that it's coming up as a challenger. Um, you know, if this is resonating with, with you, with you, likely you you may have had some of these relationships where you're just, you're just emotionally carried away. And, and that's when it's like, we have to have that balance between our logic, right? Because we can have those emotional bonds that are just like somebody's energy can just blow you away, and you think, "Oh my God, you know, this is this this has got to be the one because it feels so strong." But then you can, you know, if you've ever been in that kind of relationship where it's just like you're just head over heels, but you're getting the little red flags, right? The logic of this doesn't make sense or the spiritual warnings, like, you know, they'll come in and they may be really big red flags, but if your emotions are so strong, if you haven't mastered those emotions yet, it, it, it's so easy to ignore those red flags or just go counter to them, okay? So um, this is a card kind of indicating that it's seeing as it's coming out of the past, um, you know, learning your lessons from the past, looking at, you know, if there's a new relationship on the horizon and you may be feeling that heart thumping, right? Um, look beyond just the emotions, you know, look beyond just the chemistry and make sure that you've also got, you know, your, your spiritual, your intuitive, uh, um, 
you know, if it's a green flag rather than a red flag, making sure that, you know, this relationship makes sense logically, right? We, we need to have all those things in place. Um, before I get to this one, let's, uh, yeah, let's look at this one next. This is going to be the kind of um, advice or moving into. Again, coming up with the challenges. So let's look at this dandelion. Um, dandelion's a real survivor, right? Just gripping, gripping, gripping. And um, it can be a very, very, very positive totem. You can see it's just got the solar kind of connotation, kind of bloom where you're planted. But it also kind of, I think, has the reputation in her herbal circles as kind of being a curmudgeon, right? And so this is it's per perseverance, but also just lighten up the perseverance a little bit, right? Because it, we can get really like, you know, really emotionally attached to this idea of, oh my God, it's got to be the one and it's got to be the, you know, the twin flame and it's got to be whatever. And, and that can get us into almost this, almost the state of fight or flight about this whole thing. And, and so what I think this is saying is, um, you know, dandelion can be such a survivor, so grippy, right? And we can get really kind of uptight about it. Um, but if you turn it over, it can be super playful and just sort of like allowing yourself to play, allowing yourself to just sort of bloom and be happy, <laughs> right? Finding that happiness first. And also that's, that's where this can really lead. Um, you know, allowing yourself to just spread out, um, send your, your, um, this is like the fruits, the seeds, right? And so when we're fully balanced within ourselves, when we found that already, then we're going to be sending our little seeds out, right? Of happiness, of joy. And that's when the, you know, we're going to get a, a, a pull in that which we are wanting to attract. So I'm going to leave this, um, both of these right side up here, just remembering um, to you know, that you've, you've come all this way, you've learned a lot of lessons, you've mastered a lot of things, and, and you know, love is no different than anything else, right? We always want to just be balanced and keep that balance and, you know, hold on to that. And also, you know, just allowing yourself to let loose and play a little bit. Um, the supporting elements. Wow, so many things coming up. Um, upside down in reverse. This is star flower, finding grace, and I'm not familiar with this herb very much. So, uh, but I'm seeing a lot of peacock here. Okay, so I'd say that this is really about looking past, looking past, you know, the the outer showiness, you know, and looking into the heart of things, right? Um, even though there's not a heart here, it's a star, it just feels to me like, you know, the peacock can be so showy and he's trying, he's trying to like show off for the, the you know, his mate. Um, but just, you know, and that's why it's coming up this way is that I'd be looking beyond, you know, maybe, maybe it's not going to be what you think it is. Right. So, you know, finding that grace in the whole process, being open, you know, watching for the signs of, you know, do you find peace in your heart? Are you feeling grace within yourself? And remembering that if it's the right person, even if it doesn't seem like it's going to be just give it a little chance, give it a little time, right? And if it's right, it'll grow into it. Like you don't have to rush into this. And this is this is going to be the, the challenging aspect, spirit into matter, okay? What I'm getting here again, I'm sort of getting a, a the same the same message here. It's sort of like the grasping and the showing, you know, showing off the, 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 the rings or whatever it is. And, okay, these quick blooming things, sometimes, you know, they can look be beautiful to begin with, but take your time. I think for both of these, I'm getting really take your time because sometimes it's so flash, something that's so, so flashy or showy, 
at the beginning will wow you, but like, don't be too fast to jump into it. Okay, don't be too fast. Allow things to really unfold and to blossom. And then you're, you know, you don't have to jump into, you don't have to jump into bed right away. You don't have to jump into exchanging rings right away. You can let this blow, bloom. And maybe it's also letting it really bloom within yourself first. Really fall in love with yourself first. You know, have the patience to do that. And, you know, then it, it, it will bloom in its own time. Okay, so hope you've enjoyed and much love to you. Best, best wishes and uh, we'll catch you again soon.